And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and this is episode number 82 of Drink with Rick. Tonight, we are going to try a wine that I picked up in a bargain bin, or more like a bargain basket, at the local supermarket. This should be a lot of fun to try out. We're going to try it out for the first time. You have, no, you won't believe what I paid for this wine. I don't believe what I paid for this wine. Of course, we haven't tried the wine yet, so it may or may not be uh, as as good as what it's cracked up to be. So we don't know. I don't know. We're going to try it out. Maybe it's worth what I paid for. Maybe it's not. We shall see. But I'm glad you're here tonight. If you're joining me for the first time, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. We are live here on Facebook. You can watch and visit me on the chat. Jump into the chat on uh, Facebook, our Facebook page, Drink with Rick. Also, I'm on YouTube, Drink with Rick on YouTube, and there's a chat going there as well. Twitch, Twitch is live, and uh, the chat's live as well. Periscope, we're on Periscope and Twitter, and you can tweet me live, and you can watch it live on Twitter, at Drink with Rick. And then on Twitch, it's Drink with Rick 1, Drink with Rick and the number 1. Now, you can also watch it on the website, drinkwithrick.com. Now, we don't have a chat going there, but if you click on the post for this live episode, there is a comment box that will pop up, and you can leave comments, and I will respond in kind. Also, the podcast. The podcast goes up on uh, Monday nights, on Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, every Monday night, 10 p.m. on the dot, and that's at drinkwithrick.com. You can also hear it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, your favorite Android device, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Radio, Deezer. Uh, you can also subscribe by email. Just put in your email address in there, and every time a new episode drops, you'll get it in your inbox. So you'll hear it everywhere. It's, we're all over the place. As a matter of fact, I want to tell you something, uh, some exciting news that I have. We're on Amazon, Amazon Music Podcast now. So uh, formerly, if you were listening on your on your Amazon Echo device, I'm not going to say the wake word, but you could say the wake word and say play Drink With Rick podcast, and it would play it, but it would come from TuneIn or or somewhere else. Now it's on Amazon. So from now on, when you say play Drink with Rick podcast, it's going to pull it from Amazon. And you need to say Drink with Rick podcast because if you just say Drink with Rick because it's coming through Amazon Music podcast, if you just say Drink with Rick, the echo is going to assume that you're talking about the title of a song, and I'll say, well, I can't find the song. I can't find a song called Drink With Rick. You need to say Drink With Rick Podcast. And that's true of any podcast that's on Amazon. You have to say the name of the show and then add podcast at the end, and then the echo will find it. So that's just a little a little uh, tidbit for you, that uh, some, some useful information, or not so useful if you don't have an echo. It's okay. <laughs> this is, of course, a stream of consciousness kind of show. I do have show notes. I do some show prep, but this doesn't always follow. I don't always follow the show notes, and I haven't, I haven't on many occasions. Uh, and I rely on you in the chat to take the direction of the show most of the time, because this show isn't about me. It's somewhat about the wine, but this is really more about you and me getting together. On a Saturday night, sitting back, drinking our favorite libation, beverage, whatever it is, and just having a good time, just chatting with each other. So please, join me in the chat. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you're not drinking. Tell me what you'd like to be drinking. Tell me what you like to see me drinking. And uh, if I can afford to buy a bottle of it, I'll see if I can get a hold of it and, and try it out and give it a fair and honest review. I'll drink it too. Uh, so that pretty much does it for the intros. Of course, as I mentioned before, you can always contact me at rick at savoymedia.com. That's rick at savoymedia.com if you have any comments, questions, any criticisms, 
please try to keep it constructive. <laughs> Feedback, good or bad, it's all welcome. And I do appreciate it. It's much appreciated. Also, if you have a, a wine you want to send me to review, you know, sponsorships, I'll take those. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, send them to Rick at SavoyMedia.com. Okay, so what we're drinking tonight, this is what we're drinking tonight. We are drinking a Camina. This is a Tempranillo. This is a 2019 Tempranillo. It's from Spain. This is a Spanish Tempranillo wine. Looking forward to trying this out. Before we do that, let me check the chats for just a moment. Uh, it's kind of quiet on Facebook, and it's a little bit quiet on YouTube tonight, which is not surprising. But we do have folks in the chat on Twitch, and I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. Lynn Marley has joined us in the chat. Says, uh, oh, wow, Lynn Marley is doing a raid, a raiding with a party of seven. Well, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm honored. I am truly honored. Lynn Marley is in the chat uh, doing a raid. The uh, Marley squad is here to raid. Uh, wow, uh, this is awesome. Uh, C. Cole 86 is here. I'm glad you're here. And uh, Roxanne's World also. Um, is that a moldy lunch? A moldy lunchbox. I like that. That's pretty cool. A moldy lunchbox. That that's great. And uh, Kylie Reese thirteen. Oh wow! CM Cinders in the chat as well. And uh, welcome Raiders. Welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. I really really appreciate it. Hey, stick around. Stick around because we're going to open the wine. But we're going to have a lot of fun tonight because do you, do you like TV? Everybody has a favorite TV show, right? You all have favorite TV shows. We all do. We're going to do some a little bit of TV trivia, but I'm going to ask you, we're going to talk about our favorite TV shows. I'm going to ask you what your favorite shows are. And then at, towards the end, I'm going to tell you what all my favorites are. I've got a top 10 of my own favorite TV shows. And I'll tell you what, give me all your favorite TV shows. And whoever matches the most of their favorites with the ones on my list, I may have a prize to send you. We'll see if we can do that. A little, little prize or two. So uh, this could be a lot of fun. In any, in any case, we'll have a lot of fun. I love talking about TV. I watched way too much TV when I was a kid. I watch way too much of it now, as my wife will attest to. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here. Please stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. So here, once again, here is the wine that we're opening up. That's the back of it. Let me show you the front. Camina Tempranillo 2019. Uh, I found some information on this online. I was a little surprised at what I paid for it, to be honest. It's, uh, you, you won't believe it. You won't believe it. And I'll ask you to guess. And we'll, we'll see who comes closest to the guess uh, on this wine in just a moment. This is the back of the wine. And I'm going to read the back for you in just a mo uh, moment here. La Mancha Red Wine. This is Camina. This is Camina Tempranillo 2019. Uh, La Mancha Red Wine. It says... Uh, Circulamus Winter 1955, a group of 25 vine growers comes together thanks to their great passion for wine and the utopia of sharing their wines and the atmosphere of their land, its tastes, smells, and colors. Sixty years later, we keep on fighting for the same utopia, a line in the horizon that pushes us to move forward. Our dreams make us stronger and inspire us to continue down the path. Camina. This is 100% Tempranillo. Clean, bright, and lively wine with an attractive cherry color. Varietal aromas of red and black fruit, such as raspberry, cherry, and blackberry, well integrated with notes of almond and hazelnut. It's fresh, round, and well-structured. Goes with red and white meats, pasta, rice, and cheeses. And there is 12.5% alcohol in this 750 milliliter bottle, and it is a product of Spain. So this should be exciting to open. 12.5%, that's a little on the low side for what uh, we usually see for a lot of wines. Tempranillos, uh, it might be a little above average. Maybe 13% is what I'm used to, or 13.5%. But uh, as we all know, and as I've mentioned many, many times before, what they post in the bottle isn't necessarily what you're getting. It's usually a lot higher. So we'll see how this works. And to pair it with tonight, I have some foods to pair it with. My lovely wife, she has prepared a nice dish for me to prepare this with, uh, to uh, try it, to pair it with. We have some steak here. We have a T-bone steak. I think it's a porterhouse, porterhouse steak here. We have some cheeses. We have the, uh, we have cheddar. We have a brie. We have a Colby. And we have, of course, our illustrious 
Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda, which has never, in all the like 30 or so wines we've tasted it with before, we have never had a miss. And as a matter of fact, on an occasion or two, it's actually saved a wine uh, that was not too great. I have some crackers to, to help clear the palate as well as my water. So we're ready to go, and we're going to go ahead and open up this bottle. But let me check the chat one more time before we go there. It's quite on Facebook, quite on uh, YouTube, uh, Twitch. We've got folks in Twitch, and I'm glad you're here. Really glad you're here. Um, wow, uh, Arnold. Um, oh, a moldy lunchbox. I don't want to say Arnold. My eyes. <laughs> a moldy lunchbox says, I'm drinking vodka lemonade. There's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. Look, it's called Drink with Rick. And even though we kind of specialize in the wines, we've had beers. As a matter of fact, we had beers uh, last year, uh, last week when my son turned 21 and we had him on the show for a special, two-part special. He tried three wines and then the next night we did another one and he tried three beers and he told me what he thought, he told us all what he thought of the wine and the beers live uh, on, on, uh, online. So it was a lot of fun. We had a, lot, we had a great time. Um, let's see, what else we have here? It's, uh, let's see, hazelnut is good, as uh, Lynn Marley says. Hazelnut is good. That looks so delicious. We're going to try, we're going to try this. Oh, yeah, you know, I almost forgot to mention that the, uh, my wife just baked these tonight, and I could smell them. I was doing show prep up here, and I could smell them down in the kitchen baking, and I thought, wow. I don't know what she's baking, but it smells pretty good. We're gonna. She gave me one to try. I'm not supposed to be eating them, but she gave me one to try. So we're gonna try it out. Um, that square guy's in the chat. Oh, great! It's always good to see you, that square guy. The cupcake looks so good. It does. <laughs> I can hardly wait to try it out. We'll we'll try it with our wine too at the very end. Desserts last, right? Okay. So let's go ahead. Uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and try this Camina. We'll open it up, and we'll, we'll give it a taste. Now, um, as I mentioned before, we're going to be doing some TV trivia. We're going to have a lot of fun. Please stick around for that, because uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. And I may be giving out a prize or two for that. There's one other thing, too. Um, now, of course, what I'm doing here is I'm putting in my, my uh, aerator. This is the aerator from the... Veneto Wine Lover Set, which is actually for sale on, on Amazon. That's where I picked up mine. I purchased mine from Amazon, 1999 for the 1995 for the whole set. But you can purchase these separately. And we gave a couple away uh, on the show last year. We're probably going to do that again this year. I, I love this thing. This aerator is really nice. It's handy. It's easy to clean. Uh, it's really just kind of kind of cool. And if you want to purchase one, if you go to drinkwithrick.com, there's a link at the top or the banner up the top where you can actually click on it. And uh, yeah, I'll get a few cents for it. Not a whole lot. I'll get a few cents for it, but it kind of helps keep the show going. So if, if you're interested, you don't have to. There's no, no hard and fast rule that says you have to do that. But if you're interested and you want to purchase one, uh, you can go to the site, click on it, and <clears throat> maybe you'll get a few cents from it. We'll see. Uh, all right, so we have the aerator in. We've got to drink it out of. We have my genuine Irish crystal glass. This is Galway Irish crystal glass. It was given to me by my employers at buy2airradios.com. We're going to pour a little bit in here. We're going to try a little bit and see, see how it tastes. Wow, dark complexion, very, very dark cherry red you know as it said on the on the label i'll tell you what it's it it's very full bodied i can see that right here very full bodied so we'll give it uh wow and it does definitely have some body to it and uh it is developing a few tears so i uh, will uh, slowly but it's, it's getting there while this is while we're letting this breathe a little bit, because we do need to let it breathe for a couple of minutes, so let's go back to the chat, and then we're going to find out a little bit more about this wine. And then I have a question for you, a challenge about this. Uh, that square guy says, uh, is there anything better than home-baked treats? Not much, and I know you've baked some too, right? I know, and, and uh, you've been doing some, some cooking yourself. But, uh, yeah, nothing better. And I, I, I want to apologize, because last week I was going to try and... Um, check in there uh, when you were doing your, your live uh, cooking uh, show. And I, um, I got called away by my wife, 
and then it got late and then I, I could never make it back. So I apologize for that. But I do want to catch the, the, the next one because I do enjoy. He puts on, he does some good cooking videos. He does that square guy. If you haven't seen him on Twitch, uh, check him out. And uh, I host his uh, Lego videos and some of his videos when I'm not doing Grink with Rick. I host them on my Twitch channel. So you can see them there. But just go straight to him and get in the chat. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it all the time. Uh, that score guy says, oh, that's fine, Rick. Not a problem at all. I can't wait to do another one. I want to do a, uh, to do a blueberry pie again. Oh, blueberry. I love blueberry. Banana cream pie. I would love to see a banana cream pie uh, I, recipe. I, I'd love to see someone make those. Better yet, I'd love to eat one. I love banana cream pie uh, and banana pudding. <laughs> um, anyway, so we're letting this breathe. And while we're doing that, let's check the... Uh, Let's check this out here. I'm going to go over and say, okay, now, this gets 3.7 stars on Vivino. I've been on Vivino's site. I've been around the web, and it seems to, uh, on uh, Total Wine, uh, Total Wino, I like to call it, <laughs> Total Wine, uh, they have it for $9.99. If you buy six or more, $8.99. That's in uh, my general area. But I found it around the web. It seems to be about the going price, about $10 for this bottle. Now, that's what it costs, okay? $10. Now, I'm going to ask you for a pair of these. Now, that square guy, you already have, I already sent you a pair of these, right? Did you get them, by the way? I, I hope you did. I hope you did. Um, for those who, who don't have a set yet, these are, of course, my, my uh, coasters, my Drink with Rick coasters. A pair of these, I'll send you that and a Drink with Rick button. I got one of these here, too. Drink with Rick button. Um, for these... I'm going to ask everyone what you think I paid for this bottle of wine. Now, I got it out of a bargain bin at the super, local supermarket. They, I wouldn't call it a bin. You know, they have the, the uh, carts there, and sometimes they'll put, like, overstocked items or discontinued items or whatever in the carts, and they'll mark them down and reduce them, at least in, in the Harris Teeter in, in our area does that. So I'm going to ask everyone what you think I paid for this bottle of Camino. And the person who comes closest to what I paid for it, now I didn't pay $9.99, that's, about, that's the going rate on it, but whoever comes closest to it, I'll send uh, a pair of, the, the, uh, of these Drink With Rick coasters and a button to. Um, and that square guy, <laughs> um, he, yeah, I know. I <laughs> Gun guess $1.45, that's pretty close. That's, that's, that's not too far off. That's, that's, that's a good guess. That's a good guess. It's a good guess. Anyone else? Anyone else want to guess what, uh, what I paid for this bottle of wine? Um, I will give you a hint. It was under $10. I didn't pay $10 for it. It was under that. Um, and uh, Vankish says, late to the Lynn Marley raid. Well, you're not late. You're late. You're fashionably on time, right? Fashionably on time. We haven't taken a sip of this yet. You're fashionably on time. So, um, so welcome, welcome. Lynn Marley says maybe 15. Well, it's kind of it's pretty cold. It's way above 10. It, it, it's under. I, I'll tell you, I paid less than 10 for it. Uh, but, um, but I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll take a couple of sips. I'll give you all time to to uh, to think about it, and I'll take a couple of sips of this wine. Let's see if it's if it's worth it. Um, I think it's. I think it's opened up a little bit. I can smell it a little bit the wine, but let's see what it tastes like. And uh, once again, it's nine ninety nine or ten bucks is what it goes for. But I didn't pay that much. I didn't pay close to that. See, it, it, it's below below. All right, so let's take a, a little whiff of this wine. And yeah, right away, the cherry is strong with this one. The cherry is strong with this one, yeah. And a little bit of, uh, I smell a little bit of blackberry too, which is kind of common with, uh, with, with a lot of these wines. Cherry and blackberry. And uh, let's give it, let's give it a taste. Wow, that is quite a mix. Cherry, strawberry, and blackberry. I did taste the blackberry, but it, there's more in here. I, I, it, I tasted a hint of chocolate, and um, 
a little bit of oak, not a whole lot. Mm. It's a quite a mix of berries. This is sort of a, uh, if you like these multi-berry things, you ever had these multi-berry uh, multivitamins? <laughs> I don't want to compare it to multivitamins. It doesn't taste that bad, okay? It doesn't taste, it, it, it's actually, I like the taste. It's actually quite good. Um, it's actually pretty tasty. It's a fairly bold wine. And of course, it looks bold because it's it it's very very full bodied, but it does taste rather bold, and it, there there are some tannin in there are some tannins in this wine. It's rather tannic, and it's very very dry. This is a very very dry wine, but um, the acidity is kind of uh, let's see, there's kind of a medium acidity to it. I want to say it's medium. But this is a nice mix of berries, a really nice, nice berry mix. I like this. And of course, I like Tempranillos anyway. And it's been so long since we've had one, but I really like this, this Tempranillo mix, this uh, berry mix, and a little bit of chocolate in there too. Mm. I like it. Red and black fruit mixes. That's that's pretty good. I like that very much. It's this is actually a pretty good wine. Now. Is this a ten, worth ten dollars? Yes, I would say right off the bat, just tasting this, I think it's a ten dollar wine right off the bat. Now I'm going to have my final review after we do the tasting and after we get down into the bottle, because as I've said before, you really don't, uh, you really don't know what this wine really tastes like until you get down into the bottle, right? And by that time, if you get too far into the uh, into the bottle, <laughs> you don't really care. But <laughs> you know, um, so let's see what we've got here going on. Facebook for just a moment. Joining and uh, all the actions on Twitch tonight. That's great. All the actions on Twitch. Uh, let's see. That square uh, guy says um, uh, time to bake a pie. I reckon. Yeah. I I I, I got to catch the next one when you bake a pie. Lynn Marley says those are exact numbers. Um. Okay. Oh, I almost missed that. Here it goes. The cash says two dollars thirty one cents. Wow, that is really, really. Should I say that? It's really close. That is pretty close. Very close. Van Cash, that that is very, very close. You might win this one. Um, let's see. That score guy says, "Oh, my fiance traditionally bakes a pumpkin pie for me for my birthday." Wow. Um, I love good pumpkin pie, and my wife, she bakes a really nice pumpkin pie. She's perfected a recipe over the last 26, almost 27 years. Um, yes, Van Kesh is, uh, Van Kesh is a genius, yet yeah, it's, uh, I'm going to tell you in just a minute, I'm, I'm going to give you one more chance to, to see if you can hit it exactly, but he is the closest, Van Kesh, is it, he or she, Van Kesh is, uh, the, the, sorry, I, I can't tell from the name, but, that's the closest. Um, that score guy says, I suppose we can't have one more than one guess. I'll give you all one more guess. I'll give you all one more guess. Go ahead. I'll, I'll give you a minute or two while I have some more of this, this uh, really tasty wine. I'm, I'm really impressed with this. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> I'm more impressed after what I paid for it. <laughs> Let's see. I'll give you another minute or two. Uh, I'll give you a, give you a 10 second count. I don't have a countdown here, but I'll, I'll give you a 10 second countdown. Okay, that square guy says two dollars thirty five cents. Um, see, Van Kesh, what was yours? Yours was two thirty one. Uh, okay, two thirty one was yours. All right, uh, Lynn Marley says two twenty seven. Uh, whoa, that's even closer that's even closer all right y'all want to know what i paid for it i'll tell you what i paid for it let me let me check uh, just be fair on on facebook all right let me tell you what i paid for this because i took the label i took the special label off of the bottle before the show and i have it here right here what's left of the label I don't know if you can see the label. I don't know if you can't really see it too well, but I'm going to read it to you. I paid, drum roll, I paid 
25 cents for this bottle of wine. 225. And uh, yeah, I, I, I can't believe this myself. Two dollars25 cents. Now, a square guy was you were pretty close. Um, not close enough. Van Kesh uh, was 231. That was really, really close. And Lynn Marley said 227. Um, Lynn Marley, you were the closest to this, so you win. You win this. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And I know the square guy already has a pair of these. Uh, you should be, right? You got you got your package, right? You got your package, the book and everything? I hope so. Um, uh, well, let's see. It went across the ocean. <laughs> that one did. Uh, let me know if you didn't, if there was a problem there, because uh, I want to make sure that you got it. Okay, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Lynn Marley, um, you win this one. The coasters, the drink with the coasters and the and the uh, pen. But I'm tell you what, uh, Vakesh, I'm going to send you one too, because you were you were the first one to hit really really close to it. So you're going to get. I'm going to send you one too. I'm going to send each of you one. And uh, what you'll want to do is uh, at the end of the show, just send me your. Um, just send me your your uh, uh, you know shipping address where I can ship it to. I don't, I don't need personal information or anything like that. Just send me per, uh, a, a shipping address that's valid where I can ship it to you. Rick at SavoyaMedia.com. Just send it to the uh, to there, or you contact me on the website directly. You can do that at, at DrinkWithRick.com. I'll send it right over to you. Uh, if you need to, uh, if if you um, if you need to contact me another way. Uh, just, just let me know, and I'll, I'll see if we can find an alternate route to do that. But, um, but give me, uh, you know, give, give me a shipping a, a valid one that I can ship it to, uh, preferably in the U.S. Because <laughs> there are some places I can't ship to. Now, if you're outside the the U.S., I might have some problems shipping some of this to, to uh, if you can't get it USPS. But in the U.S., um, as long as if you're in the U.S., it shouldn't be a, an issue for me to ship it out to you. Two dollars and twenty-five cents is what I paid for this a bottle of wine. I am really, I'm, I'm kind of impressed with the taste. It, it's actually it tastes pretty good for a ten-dollar bottle of wine. Yeah, I think it's worth ten dollars. Might be worth ten, fifteen. As Lynn Marley said, uh, uh, first guess there, t fifteen dollars. I would say I'd, I'd do this. Yeah, I'd, I'd pick a bottle of this wine for fifteen dollars. I tell you what. I don't think I'm going to ever find another bottle of this wine for what I paid for it here. I should have looked around and seen if there were any more of these in the bin, but I only saw this one. I just saw this one bottle. I really lucked out on this, I think. This is a really nice wine. I'm very impressed with this wine. I like it. It's very nice. I, I, I like it. And it gets, uh, from what I've seen on Vivino and some of the other places, it seems to get 3.7 out of uh, 5, uh, oh, actually it's it's about 4 out of 5 stars, so people seem to like, other people seem to like this wine. I'm not too, uh, I'm not too surprised about that, it's pretty good. Um, let's see, uh, <laughs> uh, the color looks amazing, yeah, uh, are you talking about the wine? Yeah, the, the, the color on the wine is, is really good, and um, Oh, he says, oh, where are these ratings? Oh, oh, these, if you go to Vivino.com, and you know what? I've just checked Vivino, as a matter of fact, and I was looking at their reviews, and uh, pretty much it's pretty close to what I said when I did my tasting. I just checked it just now, and um, they're pretty close on the taste of the wine and how they rated the taste uh, on this. It's pretty close to what I said it was, so it's, it's kind of... It's kind of right there. It seems to be pretty consistent on this on this wine. So, let me check uh, Facebook one more time, and then we're gonna do we're gonna try pairing it with some food. Uh, nothing much on Facebook. I'm surprised Facebook is so quick. It's it's interesting since it's gotten darker earlier. I think people are are staying out a little bit later, so they're not coming back till later. The Facebook picks up towards the end, and I'm trying to keep the shows a little bit shorter. <laughs> so. We'll see. But anyway, I have these foods to pair it with, and we're going to try and pair it with them and see what it's like. Now, I have the first thing I have to pair it with, and I need to fill up the glass a little bit. First thing I have to pair this wine with is the, uh, the steak. This is the, uh, the steak that we have for dinner tonight, uh, leftover. 
and uh, this was the uh, uh, this porter house. It should go good. Tempranillos go good, as I said on the back. They go go good with some Italian foods. They all, but they really go good with red and white meats. This is one that's that can go good with a real variety of foods. And um, this is a good steak. My wife marinated and she actually grilled it on the grill tonight. In the rain. Mm. She's amazing. And so is this meat. Works really well with the steak. I like it. I like it with the steak. It works very nicely with the steak. Um, C. Cole 86 says Porterhouse. Yes. Dedication. Yeah, she's very dedicated. I, I, I suggested that she try doing this indoors, but she really wanted to grill it on the grill, you know, for that grilled flavor. I'm thinking, well, it's 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 raining out there, and she said, no, oh, I can I can deal with it. She put on a big hat and went outside and grilled it out there. Yeah, she is amazing. She really is. Okay, so let's um let's try it. let's try it with the steak. The, the steak is actually very good with the steak. I liked it. I'm going to clear the palate just a little bit, and we're going to try it with the cheeses. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try it with the brie. I'm not 100% sure with the brie. Brie's, and this is very good brie, by the way. Brie's go with um, specific, particular wines because uh, it's very soft cheese. Um, I don't know. We'll see. It's a good brie. Not too bad. Once again, it's not. It wouldn't be my first choice for a pairing, but it's actually pretty decent. Pretty decent with the brie. I like that. It's not not bad, not bad. And uh, Lynn Murley says I'm envious. <laughs> um, oh, oh, the the wine or the. <laughs> Let's see. I'll tr clear the palate a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure about the context there, but okay. <laughs> um. Let's try it with the cheddar. This should go pretty well with the cheddar. I'm just guessing. This should be an okay cheddar wine. We'll try it. Here you go, a little ASMR for everybody. Eric back and shut up for two seconds so you can hear it. All right. Um, it does. It does. I like it with the cheddar. It goes really well with the cheddar. I like that. Ooh. I think this is just good wine all the way around. All right, let me have a little cracker and clear the palate. Then we'll try it with the Colby. Let's see. Yeah, you know, I've had folks in the chat that have suggested in the past that I, that I do an, AMS, an ASMR version of this was just all opening up the bottle and pouring the wine and dinging the glass and all that kind of thing still thinking about that one we'll see there are, there are people out there that do that much better than i okay we'll try it with the colby and once again with the colby with that mix of a red and white cheese or a you know the the um the red and white cheese <laughs> i'm thinking of red and white wines with the white cheeses, it should be pretty decent cheese. Let's see. Mm. Once again, it works with the Colby. I like it. I think these are good cheeses that to, to pair with this wine. I think the Colby works very well with this Camina as well. <coughs> well let me clear the palate one more time. And the other half of that cracker. Try a little more water, and then we're going to try it with the Trader Joe's Double Cream Baguda. I'm pretty confident about this one. Because once again, we haven't had a miss on that yet. Mm. A little water, good for you. And we're going to try it with the, with the Double Cream Gouda. I need to pour some more of this wine. And the Gouda is good, good, as always. Or Howda, 
as you, if you're from the Netherlands. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to do that again. I'm sorry, folks. I have to do this again. Double cream gouda. Mm. This is really good. Mm. I like it. Lynn Marley says yes to gouda. Yes. Mm. Mm. I mean, it's kind of a creamy cheese because it's double cream gouda, but it makes this whole thing even creamier. Really nice pairing. I like it. So it worked well with the steak. I didn't have any uh, white meat to test it with, but uh, I didn't have chicken or anything. It's supposed to go good with some of those. Um, if you like pork, you know, it might go well with pork. But it's uh, it, re re it really worked well with all the cheeses. Not as much with the brie as some of the others. Well, that was not a big surprise to me, but it actually did okay with the brie. It, it really did. I'm going to clear the palate one more time. So, um, and let's get back to the chats for a minute. And we're going to have some fun very, very shortly. Please stick around with me. We're going to have some fun with TV trivia. I'm, 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 I'm really looking forward to this because I am a TV nut. Uh, let's see. Nothing going on. Facebook's very quiet tonight. Let's get back to Twitch. I think Twitch is where all the action is tonight. Um, and, excuse me. Here we go. So, what we have here, what we're drinking, once again, we're drinking this, the Kamita 2019 Tempranillo. And I picked this up for $2.25. It goes for $10 in, in, uh, in all the places where I've seen it, but $2.25, I, I picked it out of the bargain bin. <clears throat> this was a very unusual and a very nice find. I, I'm almost sad, I almost regret opening this bottle, and the reason is because for that price... I should have held on to this, <laughs> but hey, I'm sharing it with you. I'm sharing it with you, all my friends here, and uh, I think that that says a lot right there. That, that That's worth it. I think so. So, um, yes, Lynn Marley trivia. We're going to do some TV stuff. Here's what how this is going to work tonight. We're going to do this in a few minutes after we get through the birthdays and the national days. We're going to do some toasting, but... Um, what we're going to do tonight is I have my top 10. I have a list of my top 10 classic TV shows of all time that are some of my personal favorites. Now, what I'd like for you to do, tell me. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what your favorite TV shows. Tell me what your favorite TV shows are. It can be from anywhere, anytime. Uh, any, you know, there's no, no set time period or any, uh, any uh, country or any location, whatever. Tell me what your favorite TV shows are. We'll compare notes, and I'm going to do this. The, the person who comes up with the most of their favorite TV shows, we're going to do a comparison here. Everybody talk about their favorite TV shows, and then I, at the very end, I'm going to put up my list, and let's see who's, whose list comes closest to mine. <laughs> How many on, on the list, whoever has uh, the most shows on the list that are really their favorites that I have on my list will win a prize i'm in the mood for giving away stuff tonight that's that's what i'm in the mood for but in any case even if we don't win anything we're gonna have a lot of fun this is this is gonna be a lot of fun uh that square guy says twin peaks easy <laughs> you know um just watch twitch now he says <laughs> i tell you what there's a lot going on on twitch i also have towards the end uh i also have a question for you uh, i'm uh, kind of a poll question because I, I have an idea for something i don't usually like to give out all my ideas because i don't want people stealing them but this is something i'm thinking about doing particularly on twitch and facebook and uh, i'm going to run that by you at the end and tell me what you think if it's a good idea or bad idea whatever um i'm curious as to to what you think of it okay so <clears throat> before we get to the tv trivia and all that fun stuff Let's do some birthdays. Um, let me check uh, Facebook first just to make sure to see. Oh, and Ed's in the chat. Ed, it's great to see you in the chat. I'm glad to hear uh, to, to, uh, to hear you. To see you in the chat. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, I have not had enough of this yet, no. Uh, Star Trek's Twilight Zone, Outer Limits. Oh, boy, Ed's starting already. Okay, stick around. We're going to go through that in just a few minutes. But first... 
Let's do the birthdays. But, uh, Ed, I'm glad you're here. Please stick around. We're going to have some fun with this trivia tonight. And I know you will. <laughs> I know some. I know a couple of your tw- your favorites. Uh, I actually already mentioned them. <laughs> but uh, Okay, so the birthdays. Let's get to the birthdays. Of course, if you're just joining me, we're drinking this Camina. 2019 Tempranillo, and I really, really like this wine, and I bought it for $2.25. I can't, I know I'm bragging about it now. I'm bragging about it because I just, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. All right, so let's go to the birthdays, right to the birthdays with the fireworks and all. I want to give birthday greetings out, and my list is falling down here. I have a list. I checked it a couple of times. There we go. <clears throat> First birthday I want to toast is for my cousin Sherrod McCall. This is for Sherrod. Now, I did toast him last week. I toasted Sherrod last week, but at the time, I couldn't tell. I, I, I didn't know if it was Sherrod or Kathy because they kind of shared the same account. So I wasn't sure if that was really Sherrod's birthday or Kathy's birthday. Found out it's Sherrod's, and Sherrod's birthday was yesterday, Friday the 9th. And uh, Sherrod, I want to say once again, and specifically to you, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. I toast you. Stay in good health. I hope you have many, many, many more. I'm going to toast you again because this is uh, there's a lot in this bottle and because I can. Here's to Sherrod. Happy, happy birthday. Okay, that's for Sherrod. And um, another person I want to toast who has a birthday coming up this coming Monday is my good friend Jared, Jared Easley. Jared is a co-founder of Podcast Movement. Very, very huge event. Now, as you know, I'm a longtime podcaster. I've been podcasting since 2006. And uh, Jared is uh, one of the co-founders of Podcast Movement. And I'm actually, uh, I don't know if I should say this, but I actually am a, a moderator in the Facebook group for Podcast Movement. Uh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I don't think there's a secret. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But <clears throat> yes, I am one of the mods there. And they have a lot of mods because it's a huge group. This is one of the largest Facebook groups for podcasters. I think they're hitting uh, 36,000 members. No, that was some time back. I lost count. I lost count. It's 36,000 members. But it is a huge group, podcasters. And uh, Jared's a really nice guy. Really, really nice uh, guy in it. And I had the pleasure of meeting him uh, for, uh, you know, way back when he came to visit Charlotte uh, before podcast moved a couple of years ago. And uh, it was just a pleasure getting to, to talk to him. I've gotten to know him a little bit since then. Uh, Jared's birthday is the 12th, 10-12. That's Monday. That's coming Monday. Jared, here's to you, my good friend. Happy birthday. And I'll toast you again because I can. This is for Jared. Happy birthday, and may you have many, many, many more. And Jared shares something, uh, an interest that I have, and that is dad jokes, <laughs> bad dad jokes. <laughs> He's always posting his dad jokes, and they're really not bad. A lot of them are very clever. I like those. But he likes uh, to do dad jokes, and, and I enjoy them uh, myself. So it's, it's especially it's a nice uh, uh, respite in these, in these times. So... Um, he, and you know, it's a funny thing. I can't ever remember it, <laughs> but he, he's had so many of them. That I've really enjoyed. Okay. And then uh, the other person, the third person I want to toast tonight is for my good friend, John, John Dennis. Uh, his birthday is coming up on this coming Tuesday, the 13th. Uh, that is Tuesday, right? The 13th. I'm, I'm, did I count correct? 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday. Anyway, John, here's to you. Happy birthday. And I first met John uh, when we, uh, when Tommy and I attended our very first PodFest. There's Podcast Movement and there is PodFest also. PodFest, which is held down in Florida every year. And uh, John was very helpful and instrumental in getting me set up to go to my first PodFest as well as, as Tommy. Uh, really, really super nice guy. And um, John uh, was one of the co-founders along, uh, whoops, I spilled some wine there. Don't spill the wine. Uh, along with uh, my good friend Chris Kremitzos, John and Chris 
uh, set up podcast or excuse me podfest podfest multimedia expo, uh, expo every year and he's doing a lot of other things now and uh, he's uh, just really he's very much uh, a very a very enterprising guy really nice guy very enterprising and he's so nice and he's been really good to Tommy he's really helped Tommy quite a bit in his in his uh, podcasting pursuit so um, John, here's to you. Once again, happy, happy birthday. May you have many, many more. And I know he's a little under the weather right now. I'm not going to say, uh, but no details there, but he's, uh, he's a bit under the weather. Uh, John, I hope you recover uh, quickly, and I hope you uh, are back in full health soon and uh, back, to, uh, back to your enterprising uh, endeavors. And anyway, here's to John. We're thinking about you, buddy. Here's to you. So, um, anyway, that kind of does it for the birthdays, but we do have some national days coming up. Before we do, oh boy, Ed's coming up with some good shows. Yep, an oldie, many loves of Dobie Gillis. Yeah, Dobie Gillis is a classic, and that was that was uh, before uh, before it was uh, you know before Gilligan's Island. Uh, <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, right? Uh, Maynard G. Krebs, uh, Get Smart, another classic. And Tim's in the chat. My good friend Tim Bartlett is in the chat. Tim, it's great to see you. It's been a while, and I, I know I've toasted you a couple of times uh, since uh, you were last in here. But Tim, it's great to see you. It says my wife Melanie's is on the sixteenth. Wow, your wife Melanie's birthday is on the sixteenth. Well, we definitely have to toast her. Before I do that, let me check back with Twitch. I don't want to leave uh, folks on Twitch hanging. And uh, Oh, boy, everybody's starting. That square guy has a whole long list. <laughs> Twin Peaks, Frasier, The Simpsons, Gilmore Girls, Community, Malcolm in the Middle. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. You know, there's so many of them out there, and everyone has their favorites. We're going to get to that in just a few minutes. Hang on, everybody. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, yeah, Ed says Bob Denver. That's right. Bob Denver played Maynard G. Krebs on, and Gilligan. Uh, and he's done a few other things, too. He was in a show... I, I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Ed, remind me. There was another show that he was in that, that was a little known that a lot of people didn't know, but I really enjoyed that show. It was almost kind of a reworking of Gilligan's Island, but in a different a different venue. And if you know what it is, got to let me know. Tim says, thanks, Rick. She's laughing. <laughs> I hope she's laughing with me and not at me. <laughs> she can laugh at me. It's fine. Uh, I have no shame. Look, um, this is for... Uh, this is for Tim's wife. This is for your wife, Melanie. Melanie, your birthday is on the 16th. Wow, that's, uh, what's that, next uh, Tuesday, Wednesday? That's next Friday, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, anyway, I could toast you again next Friday because it's pretty close to the next wine stream, but I'm going to toast you tonight because uh, just because I can. And uh, every birthday special. Melanie, here's to you. Happy, happy birthday. And you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to toast you again because there's plenty of wine in this bottle. Happy birthday, Melanie. And I hope you have many, many more. I hope it's a great birthday. Tim, you've got to do something special for your wife. Do something really special. Am I getting myself, am I getting you into the doghouse? No, I hope not. <laughs> in the doghouse. I know you have I know you have something special you're going to do. And I, I hope, it, uh, hope it's uh, going, to be, going to be great. I hope your birthday is going to be really great, Melanie. Here's to you. Happy birthday. I'm excited. I love toasting birthdays. I love it when people have birthdays. There's some um, a couple of national days. <laughs> Tim says she says cheers right back out at you. And Ed's over there. He's in Far Out Space Nuts with Chuck McCann. That's not the one I'm thinking of, but uh, keep thinking about it, Ed. It's it's coming. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a hint. It is. It's almost a complete. If they took. If they took the whole premise to Gilligan's Island and put it in a completely different setting, that's what it would be. I'll, I'll, if you can't, I'll keep you guessing, but if you can't guess it in a few minutes, I'll tell you what it is. You just have to remind me so I don't forget. Because, you know, this is a stream of consciousness show, and my stream of consciousness goes, uh, branches off in all kinds of different streams in this show. Um, and let me check on that on here in the chat and that score guy. I quick scrolling for me on, for some reason down here. Let me see what we got here. Oh, okay, we're good. We're caught up. All right, so <clears throat> real quick, 
National Days. We have some National Days coming up, and this is courtesy of my good friend Marlo Anderson, who is the founder and CEO of NationalDayCalendar.com. And by the way, and I, hey, I'm not. I'm just giving you. I'm just giving him free, free uh, 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 shout outs and, and free press on this. I'm not getting paid for this. Okay, it's just it's just a uh, a website I like to use. A lot of people like to use it. He has his 2021 20, uh, calendar, National Day calendar, coming up, uh, coming out. It's actually out now, as a matter of fact. So you're interested in the 2021? I gotta get used to saying that. Uh, calendar. Uh, you can go ahead and purchase that at nationaldaycalendar.com. We have the 2020 calendar on our wall that I reference every day, and we gave one or uh, two away. I think this past uh, this past uh, uh, holiday season. So we'll be giving away some more of those. Plenty to do that. Anyway, in the meantime, October 10th, which is today, right, for a few more hours, uh, well, one more hour and seven minutes. <laughs> I haven't had enough of this, folks. Really haven't. Uh, October 10th is National Angel Food Cake Day, and I will definitely drink to that because I like uh, angel food. You know, it's spongy. Isn't it really spongy? Um it, I, it's okay. I, I can eat angel food cake, and it's it's. It, I don't think there are as many calories in it and as maybe this cake here. <laughs> but uh, National Angel Food Cake, I can drink to that. National Cake Decorating Day. Wow, two great days, two great things that go great on the same day, right? National Cake Decorating Day. Um, I got a I got a Disney story about that. Oh man, should I do it now? It's gonna push it's gonna push TV trivia day back so far. But you know, for a lot of you who know that I worked at Disney, Ed knows because he worked there too. Uh, we had uh, Ed. You probably remember who who I'm talking about. But uh, when uh, uh, we had the the Sara Lee Bakery and the uh, Borden's Cone Shop, and we had the Veranda Pavilion Restaurant, and the Sara Lee Bakery, we had a cake decorator. And uh, there, who was, uh, you know, to be honest, I can't remember her name right offhand. I can see her. I can picture her. Ed probably remembers. Ed remembers everything. <laughs> Ed, you remember everything. But uh, uh, but she was uh, a master cake decorator. She was the, the, the cake decorator, the official cake decorator there at the Shirley Bakery at, Walt, at the Walt Disney World Village, or what was the Walt Disney World Village at the time at Disney. And uh, she used to decorate these cakes. Um, she was not, I don't think she was really that fond of me, really, personally, because uh, especially when I became a lead over there, and uh, she, I don't know, she she was, I don't know, she seemed kind of gruff to me a little bit sometimes, but uh, she was a nice lady. Was just, I don't think she liked people messing around with her cake, cake decorating. Um, <laughs> maybe that's what it was. But, uh, uh, but I do have those memories, yeah. Um, I don't. I, I'm checking with Ed. Ed probably knows who I'm talking about. You remember who it was, Ed? Um, it was um, okay. And I, Ed, Ed revealed. Ed revealed. Yes, you got it right. You got it right, Ed. You got it right. Now I'm gonna. I'm gonna cover that in just a couple of minutes uh, for for everyone else. Um, but yes, that is correct, Ed. That is correct. Um, I'll I'll give it out in just a minute or two. So uh, anyway, where was it going with this? I don't know. Oh yes, cake National Cake Decorating Day. Okay, and it's also October tenth. Uh, is also today National Handbag Day. Today is of course National World Mental Health Day. I know if, if you're on Facebook uh, a lot, a lot of people have been posting things regarding World Mental Health Day. That's a very, very, very important day. World Mental Health Day. Uh, a lot of folks with with mental health issues. And um, a lot of uh, a number, some people I know that have some mental health issues, and and uh, you know a lot of our our soldiers that come back um, with some mental health issues, and uh, this World Mental Health Day. So here's the National Angel Food Cake Day, Cake Decorating Day, Cake Decorating Day, I should say, National Handbag Day, World Mental Health Day. Here's to that. Also National Chess Day. Well, this could be a long show, folks. I've got a lot of stories related to these. National Chess Day is the second Saturday in October. I love to play chess. I taught my daughter and my son how to play chess. My wife uh, can play chess. Um, I don't know if 
what was the last time? Chi, uh, yeah, I know you're in the chat. Who who won last time we played? It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> but I used to play chess with my a good friend Eric, Eric Solomon. And uh, Eric had, uh, there's another story here. When I was in high school, when I went to Lake Howell High School in uh, Oviedo, Florida, uh, Winter Springs, Florida, depending on, on how you look at it, um, he started, no, I, actually, you know what? He, I think he started this back when we were going to Oviedo High School. I think when we were on double sessions with Oviedo High School. Anyway, he started a chess club. Maybe it was Lake Hell that he did that. Anyway, not important anymore. He started a chess club, and so I joined the chess club because he had joined the film club, and we were all making films back then. So I joined the chess club, and in the year that I did that, it was very inter, it was inter interesting, and he was very entertained by my low-key chess abilities, or lack of them. I, and we uh, did a chess tournament, I think, with some other schools and other groups. And I can remember that uh, I was, I was, I did not do well in that chess tournament. That was, uh, that was. Um, I have some memories of that. Yes, here's a national chess day. National costume swap day, second Saturday in October. It's also National Motorcycle Ride Day, which is the second Saturday in October. And I Love Yarn Day, which is the second Saturday in October. Uh, okay. October 11th, which is tomorrow, is the International Day of the Girl Child. It's National Sausage Pizza Day. It's also National Coming Out Day. It's General Pulaski Memorial Day. Clergy Appreciation Day, or Pastor Appreciation Day, or Ministry Appreciation Day, depending on how you look at it, the second Sunday in October. And uh, those are all the national days. So let's toast all those all together because I don't have enough wine in this bottle to toast them all individually. To the national days. Um, anyway, I think that does it for the national days. Once again, if, you, uh, if you're just checking in for the first time, we're drinking the Camina 2019 Tempranillo. It is quite good. It's quite good. Uh, $10 a bottle, I think, is what it's going for. I paid $2.25 in the because I found one in the bargain bin. And boy, what a bargain it was. What a bargain it was. I'm really, I'm enjoying this wine. I'm enjoying this wine immensely. Probably more than I should. Should I put it down? No. We'll see. Okay, so we've got through the national days. Let's uh, Let's talk about trivia here a little bit. A little bit. We're going to spend the rest of the night on You know, you can go hours talking about TV trivia and favorite TV shows and stuff like that, right? Am I right? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course I'm right. Because uh, <laughs> Not just because I'm right, but because it's just it's just true. Everybody loves TV, right? Um, so anyway, uh, oh, wow. Uh, Square Guy says, I'll see you next week and hopefully uh, record. Thanks for a fun stream. I'm going so soon. I, I hate uh, to see you go so early. Uh, I know you have your streams that you're doing here, but uh, well, I hope you'd stick around. But I tell you what, I'm going to, he says, unfortunately, I'm going to miss the TV trivia segment. We're heading to the park to see my family. The only way we can see them in lockdown here. I understand. I full understand. Look, you all have a great day. Stay safe. That's square guys. Stay safe. Um, social distancing and all that stuff. Uh, just, just, just stay safe and have a great time at the park. Uh, I, I, I envy you in that in a little bit. Uh, because uh, anytime when you can get out and about, especially during these times, just uh, you know, you want to you want to take advantage of that while the days are warm. And now, a square guy, he's in uh, he's in land down under, so so it's daytime for him, nighttime for us, daytime for him. Make the most of the day, make the most with your family. That square guy, and stay safe. I hope you have a great one. I hope to see. He says, I hope to see you here again. Oh, oh he's talking to Lynn Marley. <laughs> No problem, this square guy. Family comes first. Family comes first, and that's important. So he says masks on, lots of hand sanitizer. That's the way to do it. Uh, he says case numbers here are slowly dwindling here in Melbourne. Hopefully we can get out of lockdown soon. I hope so. I hope we can all do that very soon. Look, uh, my family and I went to, because uh, of Tommy's birthday, we went and had a little uh, birthday celebration last Sunday. We went out uh, and played miniature golf with some of his friends 
And, uh, and of course, we were doing the social distancing, and it was all outdoors. So we we're trying to, you know, we we're wearing the masks and doing the hand sanitizer and the whole bit. So you know, we were trying to be very careful about it. But um, but we had a we had a pretty good time. It was a little awkward with the masks on um, and, and everything, but it, it wasn't too bad. It was it was too bad. We you know we did it. We still had a great time. But uh, that's very important. Well, you all you'll have a great uh, great time, and uh, stay stay safe, stay in good health. That square guy. We'll see you here next time, and uh, we're trying. <laughs> we're trying. Okay, so uh, before we get to the trivia, just for a moment, I do want to uh, just a brief thing about. I have a confession to make. I have a brief confession to make. Last week, I was talking about National CB Radio Days. We're going over the National Days. We're talking about National CB Radio Day, which is ten four day. You know, ten four good buddy. You know, National 10-4 uh, Day. And uh, I was telling you how that was signed into law, or signed into law, that, that was a proclamation made by President Jimmy Carter back in the 70s. And, uh, of course, uh, National CB Radio Day, of course, you know, for, for full disclosure, I work for by two-way radios, and, and we, we sell two-way radios, and we sell CB radios and all types of radios. Um, I made, now, I wrote an article for our website years ago, uh, about CB Radio Day, and I have brought it up a few times since. And uh, the article uh, that I wrote explained how uh, uh, President Carter, uh, you know, signed this proclamation for CB National CB Radio Day every year on 10-4 on October 4th. Um, I got the date wrong. Now I kept saying, I kept saying that that uh, he signed this proclamation in October of, of 1974. That wasn't correct. Now, I knew better than that. I knew what the correct date was. I just forgot about it. Of course, I'm doing, I'm doing a live show like this, and we've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I'm making excuses for myself. Whatever. What the heck? I forgot. Okay. <laughs> I knew the date, but it just like it slipped my mind. And, and for some reason, 10-4, the, the number 4 stuck with me because it was 10-4 day. So I kept saying 1974. Well, it was not 1974. It was 1978. That's the truth. So I'm making my correction here because that's what I do. I admit when I'm wrong. I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. As uh, as I've been taught by my wife. <laughs> For many, many years. <laughs> uh, yes, my wife has taught me very early on that I'm wrong. <laughs> and to admit that I'm wrong. So that's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm teasing her. But, you know, yeah, I, I've, I've learned a long time ago to admit when I'm wrong. Um, I have no shame. I have no pride. I admit it. I got the date completely wrong. And I... It was bad for me because I kept telling everybody it was 1974 that he signed into law. It was not. It was actually October 2nd, 1978, which is when when he was president. So uh, here, so uh, I I stand corrected or sit corrected, and uh, I apologize for that. Anyway, uh, apologize for for getting the dates wrong. Anyway, I just wanted to make that clear. Yes, yeah, and I wrote articles on it too. So you know that with the correct date. So I, I should have known better, but I didn't. So um, that square guy says, uh, all right, heading out now. Well, bye friends. You have a great, great time. That square guy. And here's to you. Anyway, the correct date was 1978. If you're interested in CB radio or ham radio or, or um, any kind of radios at all, of course, you can go down to buy two air radios.com buy two air radios.com to uh, pick up the radios emergency weather radios we have another we have another storm that's uh, that's it's already hit that hit the coast and uh, it's we're getting some rain from it this weekend but uh, if you're interested in any kind of radios and get a weather radio please get an emergency preparedness kit ready uh, go to ready.gov and get put together your emergency kit have an emergency weather radio, have an emergency two-way radio ready. You can pick them up at buytwowayradios.com. We have a promo code for you. Promo code is WINESHOW, W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W, W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W. If you enter the code WINESHOW when, uh, you, when you check out, you can save an additional 5% off the, your order, and it's across the board. It doesn't have to be whatever radio you want to get. It could be an accessory. It could be any other uh, related accessory, any car accessory, whatever. Wine Show will get you five percent discount, and I can tell you that it works. I can tell you firsthand that it works because I tried it myself. I did it myself. 
What happened was I, uh, and oh, once again, for full disclosure, I work for BuyTwoWayRadios.com. I am the pro, uh, the product manager for BuyTwoWayRadios.com, but I don't make any money doing this. Uh, this isn't really an official because they're not officially uh, sponsoring my show. Um, I'm doing. I'm just doing this because I have a promo code that I can give to you as if you were in a listener of Drink with Rick for you to use. I'm not making anything extra on this. Trust me. Okay. If I do, if I ever get to the point where I do, and I've said this before more than once, um, and I'm actually sponsor, getting sponsors and, and making money off something, like I mentioned earlier with the, uh, with the affiliate codes for Amazon, I will tell you. I will be honest and tell you about that, okay? But I'm not making anything on this. Um, what happened was uh, I know that that promo code works because... If you know, if you know, it's what I have here, and it's not very distinct. But I, I wear a surveillance earpiece, and this, this was actually made for radios, for two-way radios. Uh, but I have this surveillance earpiece here, and I do it so I can monitor the audio instead of having to wear headphones, a headset, and you know all kinds of junk on my head while I'm doing this show because this is also a podcast, and I have to monitor the audio. Instead of doing all that, I wear a surveillance earpiece, like they do on the news. You know, you see people on the news, uh, the newscasters, the the anchors, they, they wear these things, and, and a lot of other people wear them. The men in black, yes, I know, they wear them all. Uh, but I wear one here because I can hear. Now, I'm on a delay. I can hear myself on a delay on the Facebook uh, stream, and I do that so that I can monitor the audio, and I know that it's coming. Now, it can be a little bit putting off it, a very... The, at the very first, you know, having a 15 second delay when you got audio coming and you're trying to talk, it can be a little bit disconcerting. But I have learned how to do that over time, and it can be done. Uh, but anyway, this the earpiece that I have, I uh, normally come with mushroom tips that you stick in your ear, it gets down into the ear canal, which bothers me a lot. So I don't use those. I use this. I use a uh, what's called a. This is an ear loop. And the thing is with the ear loop, the ear loop fits over the ear, and it's very, very comfortable. It doesn't go into the ear so much, but it's, it's very, very comfortable. So I can see here and wear this thing all day, and it doesn't bother me at all. It's, it's just great. It's almost like I forget I'm wearing it sometimes. I have, because sometimes I've gotten up from here after the show. I started to walk off. I'm like, oh, wait, <laughs> I still have this thing on. Um, but um, this one, the old one that I have broke, because I've been using this for the last year and a half. It broke like this. So I had to go buy a new set, and I had to buy them quick. Um, so I, I bought them from Buy Two Air Radios, because that's where I got this, Buy Two Air Radios. This, this piece costs about $19.99, and then the ear, the, the ear loops are about 8 bucks Or $5.99, I'm sorry, these are $5.99. I used the promo code Wine Show when I checked out, and I saved 5% of my own. So I, I tested it, it worked, it does work. So I know that. So anyway, there you go. I've tested it myself. No, I know it works. Okay, so TV trivia. I know everybody's waiting for that, right? Let's talk about TV trivia. Okay, so uh, Ed, you had, uh, Ed says, can't remember her name either. I saw Bob Hope in the shop, though. Does that help at all? Well, I remember when the Bob Hope came through there. I remember that. And Bob Hope used to stay at uh, one of the hotels. As a matter of fact, he used to stay at, uh, I think a couple of times he stayed at the, uh, at the same hotel that Michael Jackson used to stay at when he would come down and bring his entourage. And yeah, I met, you know, I, I served Michael Jackson too. Yeah, there's a story uh, for another time. But uh, I remember those days Bob Hope, Michael Jackson, a few big celebrities. I've met a few of them come through uh, when I worked at Disney. Um, that's, that's, um, it's one of the perks of working at, uh, at a high-profile place like uh, like Walt Disney World. You you, get, you see everybody come through there, I mean, celebrities and whatever. So um, <clears throat> where was he going? It's my stream of consciousness again. Anyway, so where were we going with this? Okay, so Ed said uh, what we're talking about is is we were talking about TV shows, and I want to I want to know what your favorites were. And that square guy left us his. And Ed left us some of his. He's actually still here. <laughs> Ed says, uh, Star Trek, Twilight Zone, Outer Limits. Those are some of your favorites. Some of mine, too, as a matter of fact. I like Outer Limits, as a matter of fact. Uh, an oldie, many loves Adobe Gillis. Now, uh, for those of you who, uh, that's a show from the, from the late 50s, early 60s, Adobe Gillis. 
and that's uh, you know, that uh, co-starred um, with a character that co-starred in it uh, was Maynard G. Krebs. That was his character's name, and it was uh, played by Bob Denver. And if you know, Bob Denver went on to play Gilligan on Gilligan's Island, but he did a few other things too. And um, Ed was was mentioning that, and I I said uh, I said, do you know what? Uh, what other TV show that 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 he was in, that Bob Denver was in, that was almost a duplicate, a duplicate of Gillian's Island, but it was in a completely different setting. It was almost like they they said uh, Sherwood Schwartz, who produced Gillian's Island and a few of these other shows, he must have been sitting around one day and said, "Oh yeah, you know, I, I need to come up with another idea for a TV show. What can I do?" And he looks at the scripts for Gillian's Island and he goes, "Hey, you know what?" Maybe I can rework this into a different TV show. This is not a lot of work. So he took the same premise and said, hey, let's turn this into a show for the, the Old West. So Gilligan's Island, if you're not familiar with Gil if you don't remember Gilligan's Island, I'm sure everybody does. Who doesn't remember Gilligan's Island, right? Okay, Seven Stranded Castaways, right? They were on a three-hour tour. A three-hour tour. And they got stranded, you know, weather got rough. Tiny ship was tossed and all that kind of stuff. Okay, they end up on the shore of the... the, the <laughs> no, I'm, I'm singing the song practice. Like, okay, so they ended up on the shore of the island. Boy, I hope I don't get a DCMA takedown for that. Huh? A YouTube, uh, they're terrible. So, they're on the island. <laughs> and there were seven of them, right? There's Gilligan, the Skipper 2... Uh, the millionaire and his wife, the professor, and all the rest. Yeah, the movie star. Again, okay? the movie star, the professor, and Marianne. Who can forget Marianne? Who can for Who was your favorite? Was your favorite Ginger or Marianne? I know who my favorite was, and it was not Ginger. Marianne. Uh, I, you know, Ginger was supposed to be the the really, uh, you know, the movie star, the the really sexy person, and and it turns out that. I think the person who got the most fan mail from guys was was uh, was uh, the girl who played Marianne. <laughs> so uh, anyway, where was it going? Oh yes, uh, so Gilligan, Gilligan's Island. That's seven castaways in Gilligan's Island. They're stuck. They're 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 stuck on this island. They can't get off no matter what they do. So here's Sherwood Schwartz, Schwartz, and he comes up. The, yeah, he used the Schwartz uh, <laughs> space balls. Huh? Uh, I don't know. It just came to my head. So here's Sherwood Schwartz, and he's, I guess he's coming up with, trying to come up with an idea for another TV show. And he says, what can I do? Oh, let's, we, let's we rework this whole Gilligan's Island thing, and let's put them, instead of being on an island, let's put them in the middle of the Old West. And that's what they got. They got a show called Dusty's Trail. Dusty, instead of Gilligan's Island, it was Dusty's Trail. And the whole premise was that Dusty, played once again by Bob Denver, who played basically the same character as Gilligan, the, um, um, pretty much the same character as Gilligan on Gilligan's Island. Apparently, he the, they're on a wagon train, and they're carrying, of course, there's seven people on the wagon train. He's, he's starting to see something, a pattern here. Seven people on the wagon train. They're, well, they're five passengers, okay? There's, uh, Gil, uh, no, Dusty, <laughs> and the stagecoach driver, Skipper, right? And I, the stagecoach driver, I think he was played by, uh, let's see, he was played by uh, uh, F Troop, F Troop. Uh, why is it, why am I blanking out here? Uh, I want to say Fest, it wasn't Fest Park. It, it was uh, uh, the guy who played the Sarge on F Troop. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, Ed, right? Um, so it was... Uh, he played, he played the stagecoach driver, and then there were five passengers. Five passengers that set sail that day in a stagecoach. I'm mixing this all up now, right? It, it, it really, it, it's, it's the same thing. It's the same show, just different setting. And they had the five people in the stagecoach, and there were a millionaire and his wife. <laughs> and a, uh, I think there was a saloon girl who was like a, a, a stage. Uh, actress or something, the uh, uh, stage actress, saloon girl, whatever I don't remember. And then there was the the innocent uh, 
you know, farm girl and uh, who was, uh, yeah, there was a smart guy, a professor on there. So it's the same people, essentially, the same people. They're just in a stagecoach in the Old West in the 1800s instead of on Gilligan's Island in the 1960s. Same thing, same people. Uh, but it was fun. It was still fun. I, I watched the show, and it was a lot of fun. I think it only ran for like one season, I think. One one season, maybe two. I think it was only one 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 season. But uh, it was it pretty much, yeah, it was uh, it was surreal. Almost It was almost like going into the Twilight Zone, speaking of another famous show. But um, anyway, so uh, where were we? Here on uh, Twitch. Let me check out Twitch again because uh, the scroll stop. Uh, Quit scrolling here. Um, CM Sanders says Colonel Sanders too, right? I'm not sure where she's going with that, but okay. All right, so what are your, some of your favorite TV shows? Uh, Ed's told us some of his, and uh, he's got a few more. Let's see. Ed says um, favorite Bob Hope line is coming. He and a group were in a deserted mansion. One woman says, don't big empty houses scare you? And Bob says, not me, I was in vaudeville. <laughs> That's a great line. That is a great line. Don't uh, empty house to scare you. Not me, I was in vaudeville. <laughs> self-deprecating. You know, Bob, that was one of the things that Bob Hope was kind of known for, is a, is a little bit of self-deprecating humor in, in a fun way. Um, that's Which was the opposite of Don Rickles, who was basically... Uh, <laughs> he was basically putting on everybody else, uh, but uh, he was also fun. Everybody had, a, had their shtick there, right? So, um, anyway, so where what was it going with this? Okay, so I have some favorites. I, I want to ask you if if you know what's uh, some of my favorite shows. I'll say that uh, I I loved and still love to this day Green Acres. I think it's one of my one of my all time favorite shows, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Green Acres is uh, it just just a classic, just a classic. The Beverly Hillbillies along like uh, with that, but uh, there were a lot of shows. I've watched a lot of TV, too much TV in my time. I used to come home from school, and I mentioned this before. I used to come home from school in the afternoon, sit down and watch Star Trek and The Adams Family and The Monsters and and uh, the Flintstones and. What else was on at the time? Gilligan's Island, of course. Uh, Dusty's Trail, if you could you could find it anywhere. Um, well, let's see what else was uh, was on at that time. It was uh, a lot of reruns back in the seventy. This is back in the, the uh, mid to late seventies. A lot of reruns, but I also a lot of saw a lot of stuff on on first run TV on on prime time. You know, Mary Tyler Moore Show. Uh, was was one that was that I always really enjoyed. Carol Burnett, Carol Burnett show was just a hoot, and it was always fun to watch them, especially when Tim Conway joined the cast. And there was uh, Carol Burnett, and uh, in the beginning, Carol Burnett, and there was uh, Harvey Corman was on early on, and and when Tim Conway joined the cast, he made it his mission to. Uh, try to to, to uh, make Harvey Corman lose it all the time, where he would just he would, he, would, he would just go out of out of character and just lose it and crack up right there on the on on uh, live on TV. So he made his mission to do that. So one of the interesting stories about about Tim Conway is he used to go when they would do rehearsals during the during the week. He would do the rehearsals straight. He would do all the rehearsals straight. Uh, for all of the all of the sketches that they would do, and if you're not familiar with uh, with those of you who are not familiar with uh, uh, that show, it was basically you know a variety show with a lot of different sketches and scene and dancing and all that kind of stuff. It was popular back in the '70s, so popular today you can watch it on MeTV locally here in the in the states. Um, but um, anyway, so. Tim Conn would go would go in and he would do the rehearsals for all the sketches and he'd play them all straight. But then when they were going to go tape the show and do the show live, um, he would completely go off script and do stuff that 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 none of the other characters knew was coming. And he would do this just so he could get a rise out of them. He he would do this just so he could try to to just kind of break them out of character and, and just crack them up. And they just lose it right there live on TV. 
And he, did, he would do that to Harvey Corman all the time. And it was, and people started watching Carol Burnett not just because it was good. It was a good show, and well written. But um, a lot of people would tune in to watch Carol Burnett each week, not just for the sketches, but be, but to see what Tim could do to Harvey Corman to make him break up and lose it on the set. And uh, it was always fun to watch when he did that. And uh, uh, that was one of the, the, the cool things about that show. People just tune in. It was a very popular show at the time. Um, a lot of weird, weird, uh, weird things uh, uh, about TV back then that just, you, you know, you look back and you, you think, uh, why did they do that? And then you find out later that, that here's the backstory behind all that. And it, 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 you really, really appreciate it more. Um, let's say, so Ed's favorite shows, uh, which got, let's see, Tim, you got some favorite TV shows? Uh, let's see. Ed says "Far Out Space Nuts" with Chuck McCann. That was another. That was another show. Yeah, that that was. Uh, I think it was short lived. I don't. I don't remember too much about the show, although I'd seen it. I'd seen it before. Um, yeah, Ed says "Wackiest Wagon Train in the West." Yes, that was Dusty's Trail. Um, Mikhail's Navy. Tim Conway earlier. Yes, Ed. Tim Conway. Uh, when he, you know, that Tim Conway started off as a writer. He was actually a writer, and, and it was not his intention to to go into to be on screen in the comedy. But he kind of worked his way into that. Mikhail's Navy was uh, one where he got a big break on, and uh, his character on Mikhail's Navy is the is the 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 first mate to the skipper to uh, to Mikhail, who was played by Ernest Borgnine. Uh, but uh, it was just really hilarious. And the Mikhail's Navy was another classic. And the Mikhail's Navy took place in World War II when they were on PT boats, and, and uh, uh, Mikhail was, was uh, captain of the PT boat, and, and uh, they were stationed on an island in Japan and, and, and that sort of thing. And, and Tim Conway played the, the first mate. Yeah, classic stuff, classic stuff. I remember all these shows, <laughs> old and new. Mr. Ed, another one, classic one that I always enjoy, Mr. Ed. You know, one one that uh, people don't talk about anymore that I used to watch all the time uh, that I really used to enjoy was was My Favorite Martian. I used to enjoy My Favorite Martian. I showed Tommy a couple of episodes of it a while back. I don't think he got too much into it, but I used to find that to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, uh, my favorite Martian, Bill Bixby. That was Bill Bixby in his early days when he was really, really young. Before he became the Hulk, people remember Bill Bixby uh, for a couple things since then. But w one of them was he played uh, uh, Doctor Banner. You know, and, and the Hulk, or he played Doctor Banner as Doctor. You know, as the Doctor before he became the Hulk. Lou, Fer and this is the show with Lou Ferrigno in it. Lou Ferrigno played the Hulk, and then. And then uh, Bill Bixby played the doctor before he'd change over. And uh, that was, this was after My Favorite Martian, but he really, I think that's really where he got a, a big kick with his career. And he was in some other movies and TV shows and things like that, but that's what I remember him most was from My Favorite Martian. Uh, let's see, there, oh, a lot of TV shows, classic stuff from that era. I used to be a big fan of Lost in Space, but I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole because we're going to do another one another time about sci-fi. Uh, my wife, Chi, and I are currently uh, finishing up, wrapping up, uh, watching Farscape all over again, which is really is a lot of fun. Farscape is a lot of fun, uh, which uh, aired on the uh, Sci-Fi Channel back in the, uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, about the time my kids were born. Um and uh, we're going to be watching the last part of the Peacekeeper Wars here, which ends the, the whole series uh, here shortly. Uh, the, the, uh, so there's a lot of good sci-fi that I don't want to go down the sci-fi channel right now. But I didn't mention, I mean, I'm going to mention Star Trek because, because Ed did. And yeah, that is, uh, Ed says, uh, uh Ed says his name was Tom, but Tom Conway was already taken. That's right. That's right. Tom Conway. The stage name was Tim Conway. More useless TV trivia right here on Drink with Rick because that's what that's I spent too much time watching TV and his shows because of all the things in the world that I could be proficient at rocket science anything else 
I had to fill my mind with TV trivia. <laughs> and that's basically what I have because I watched way too much TV as a kid and I still do now. Well, I want to find out what everybody else thinks. Now, that square guy left me with some, some things before he had to go. He said, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm looking through the, the chat here because I know I saw him pull some up, and I think I mentioned him. Yes, he mentioned Twin Peaks, another good show, although I kind of – I kind of um, – uh, stopped watching some of it towards the end because it just everything got so <clears throat> everything seemed to got to get so complicated and in my opinion kind of convoluted towards the end that you never really did find out who who uh, who killed the girl <laughs> I don't know if they ever did really because I didn't see the last of the end of it uh, it just got a little bit too everything got kind of went off these different directions uh, Twin Peaks but it was still it was still uh, a good show. Frasier, yeah, Frasier's a classic, but I tell you what, I never really got into Frasier as much as I got into Cheers. I always liked, I liked Cheers, and I remember being up in Boston. Actually, I was visiting my sister and my brother-in-law in Boston, and of course, my my uh, my new niece at the time, who was, who was new niece, she was uh, very, she, she was still a baby, went to visit them up in, uh, up when they, when they were staying up there, and they had a house up there, and uh, they took me around Boston, and uh, I got to go to the Cheers, you know, the, the pub that they shoot all the front for Cheers, the one that the pub that the ba that, that Cheers is based on. And I got to go in, look around. I got some Cheers memorabilia. I think I got a, a mug and some other stuff. I think it was a T-shirt. I, I think that's long gone. It's uh, now, but I, we still have the mug, and uh, I think we do because I, I saw my sun drinking out of it the other day <laughs> but um that was just about the time i just happened to be there about the time that they were wrapping up the series for cheers and um they did this whole thing where they were televising a whole big hour long special finishing off cheers and they did this panel at the end after the show and uh it was uh, it, it was pretty fun to watch. I think we actually watched it on TV while I was up there, but I'd already actually already been there. That the the pub that it was based on was the uh, the Bull and Finch, I believe, the Bull and Finch, and uh, got to go see that. That was a lot of fun, and that was still when they were doing you know the show and they were doing a lot of Cheers related stuff. That was that was kind of fun. Uh, Tom Antio is in the chat. I see you, Tom Antio. He says I liked Warehouse Warehouse Thirteen. Yes, Warehouse 13 is another classic, uh, in my opinion. Uh, that was on the Sci-Fi Channel. Warehouse 13. Uh, if you've never seen that show, you got to see the whole series. But don't watch the last episode before you watch the rest of it, because the last episode, it's uh, it was a great way to end that show. I, I think it was a really great ending for it. Kind of a tearjerker in a way, but it was a great ending. But you got to watch that whole series and the progression of that whole series. Warehouse 13 is a lot of fun. Um, and, um, and the lady that played Mrs. Frederick in the show, who, the mysterious Mrs. Frederick, she, um, this is, uh, she went on to do what she's, she's doing now. What she's doing now is uh, NCIS New Orleans. She plays the medical examiner on, on uh, NCIS New Orleans. And... Uh, that was uh, CCH Pounder, CCH Pounder, and she was just great as Mrs. Frederick. She was just uh, great in that show. It was just a classic. I always still think of her, even though I'm watching NCIS New Orleans sometimes. Uh, she and I like that show. Uh, I still think of her as Mrs. Frederick from Warehouse 13. A lot of good stuff. Um, speaking of which, speaking of great endings, there are some great endings to some TV shows that uh, I think are just classic. Uh, some TV shows, you know, like Gilligan's Island, whatever we were talking about that before, that just they just kind of canceled the show and it was over and they're still stuck on the island. Very frustrating stuff. Of course, they fixed that when they did, uh, what, five or six successive uh, made-for-TV movies to kind of, kind of resolve that, which they actually did. But there are other TV shows like Time Tunnel. Time Tunnel was one where they, they stuck them in time. And they were stuck there. Same thing with Lost in Space. Lost in Space, they're still lost out there. <laughs> with Dr. Smith. Uh, lost in Space. Well, 
And uh, yeah, we're, we're talking about sci-fi now. I'm moving back into sci-fi. One of my favorite genres, by the way. We'll have to talk about that next time. Uh, but I think one of the greatest, I, in my personal opinion, I think one of the greatest endings of all time in a TV show was the new Newhart show. Now, you remember the old Bob Newhart show? That was a classic, and I used to love the Bob Newhart show. But when the Newhart, the show called Newhart, where he's, he plays an innkeeper uh, up north, uh, when that show ended, there was the I don't want to spoil it for you if you've never seen it, but if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. It was probably the greatest ending of a TV show ever, with uh, with with Newhart, where he he's I'm not going to spoil it. I can't do that. But it was just, uh, trust me, it's probably one of the in my opinion one of the best endings of a TV series ever. Just just it was just awesome. And if you're a fan of Bob Newhart's show and a fan of Newhart, you would just, yeah, you'd, you'd love it. And I think it probably got, for a long time, it, it was probably the most highest rated uh, uh, TV show endings, final episodes of a series uh, ever for a long, long time because of that the classic stuff. Anyway, so we're going on an hour and 33 minutes. Whoa, we're going long here, folks. You know, cause I, see, I can talk for hours about this stuff. I can talk for hours about it, but everybody else is quiet in the chat. Please tell me what your favorite shows are. I'm going to give you my list here in just a moment of favorite TV shows. Um, Chi says, I love Lucy. I know you do. I love Lucy too, uh, as well, and I think everybody loves Lucy. And I'm going to spoil it for you here in just a moment. I love Lucy. Great show. Great show. Uh, a lot of really good classic shows. I'll tell you what, let me give you, go ahead and give you, because it is getting late. We are going kind of long. Let me give you my top ten list of, of TV shows that were some of my favorites. I'm going to uh, do that in just a moment. Before, uh, well, let's see, I've got this list right here. Top ten classic TV shows of all time. I'm going to give you uh, number ten first. And... Uh, I kind of ordered them in, in order of, of what I thought were, were great. But there's so many of them. There's so many of them. It was very difficult for me to to choose the top ten. But I'll tell you, number ten for me, number ten for me was Star Trek. And when we're talking about Star Trek there, this whole Star Trek universe, is uh, there's a lot to it. And some of the shows I like better than others. But we're talking Star Trek. I like both the original series and The Next Generation um, the different things about each one that I like, but I like the uh, the original series and the Next Generation. So uh, Ed, you kind of won there on that one. Of course, that's not surprising. A lot of people, a lot of us did that. That's the, I think that was an easy one to to classify as one of the greatest shows. Um, when it comes to, by the way, as a matter of fact, Ed, you would appreciate this. You would appreciate this. Um, with uh, Sir Patrick Stewart, who played, of course, uh, and actually still playing it because they're doing the, the uh, uh, Picard series now on uh, CBS All Access, I think is what they're doing it on. I only saw the first episode, but I liked it a lot because he played, uh, he, he went, he retired and, 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 and ran a, a vineyard. <laughs> so there's an easy way to, to, to that's one reason why I'm, I appreciate that. He, he, ran, he ran a vineyard. And uh, so great for Picard. And he likes Earl, uh, tea, Earl Grey, hot, which I like Earl Grey tea, hot. Sir Patrick Stewart, there's a little thing about him that I wanted to mention. I meant to mention it last week, but I didn't. Uh, Sir Patrick's been doing, he was doing for a long time, for 154 days, he was doing a sonnet a day. This was on Facebook. He was up on Facebook doing a sonnet a day. And what he would do is every day, he just wrapped it up like last week, and I was watching this, and I would I would check in and watch it because he would read Shakespeare's sonnets. He had a big book of of all these sonnets. He had 154 sonnets, and every day he would get on a Facebook to everybody, and read one. He would read or perform a sonnet every day, in his you know in the comfort of his home. Sometimes he'd be in like in his 
in 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 a chair, and he'd have his dog there with him, and, and sometimes and and uh, sometimes he'd be out in a, a patio in the garden and reading it and that sort of thing. It was a lot of different, you know, several different settings, but it was always really refreshing to watch this. It was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed it. And it kind of opened my mind up a little bit more to uh, it exposed me to some of Shakespeare's sonnets that I had never heard. And he would read one every day. And he did his, he finished his 154th one, I think, last week. Uh, last week, it was the last Friday, I think, last Friday or Saturday. Anyway, he was doing a sonnet a day. And it was just a lot of fun to, to, to watch and listen to him read the, read each one of these sonnets every day. But that was what Sir Patrick Stewart was doing. I want to give a toast to Sir Patrick Stewart because just because I appreciated what he did. And he was just doing it, you know, no politics involved, no anything else. He's just doing it and, and, and have a good time. And everybody enjoyed it. And uh, I want to say uh, to Sir Patrick Stewart, here's to you. I want to thank you for giving us a sonnet a day. Thank you. Here's to Sir Patrick Stewart. Um, so, uh, anyway, what was it going with this? Oh, yeah, movie trivia. We're still on movie trivia. Uh, the uh, top TV, 10 TV shows. Okay, so Star Trek, and I like both of them for different reasons, but I really like performance of uh, in, in Next Generation of, of uh, Sir Patrick Stewart. Number nine, another classic TV show uh, that's a favorite of mine. Number nine is Leave It to Beaver. Anybody remember the beef? You know, his mom was was always worried about the beaver. <laughs> worried? I'm worried about beaver. Huh? Well, there's good reason to be because he was always getting himself into some kind of some kind of uh, situation, wasn't he? Leave It to Beaver with uh, with Tony Dow. And Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. Yes, uh, a, a classic, classic stuff. Very funny show. But one of the things, one of the reasons why I Leave It to Beaver was was kind of special, stuck out in my head, is that they would tackle some issues of the day that were that were some serious. They did tackle some serious issues, but they did it with a lot of finesse and a lot of taste, and from the point of view of a little kid, of of of, of Beaver Cleaver, Theodore Cleaver. And uh, th that was one of the things that the, the writing was just tremendous. It, it was just awesome. And one of the cool things about the writing on that show is that these were all adults and they were writing dialogue for kids. And they pretty much nailed it for that period of time. They pretty much nailed it. A lot of, of people that, that uh, and, and I've seen this in shows since, that try to write dialogue for, for, for kids. And they, they don't really, it, it's a hit and miss thing. And a lot of misses. But these people knew. I mean, they really understand kids speak at that time and, and the way kids talk and the way, the, the call, talked and the way they thought and that sort of thing. It was very, very, very cool, refreshing to see people writing for kids from the point of view of a kid. Leave it to Beaver. That's another another great uh, classic that I think is is definitely worth mentioning. Another one, number uh, number eight for me, Twilight Zone. Classic stuff about Twilight Zone. I'll tell you why the Twilight Zone, and not maybe not for reasons you think, uh, why it was such a classic. Yes, first of all, it is a classic, very, very famous show, and of course they've made movies from it, and they've done reboots. Um, and Bob, uh, excuse me, Ed says Bob Newhart had a variety show. Yes, he did. He, he did have a, a variety show. It was it was it didn't last long, did it? Oh wait, he says Bob Newhart had a variety show. One summer got canceled and got an Emmy the same week. <laughs> Only Bob Newhart could do that. He was he was uh, definitely definitely uh, definitely talented. But uh, it was sad to see Bob Newhart. But he lived to be. Uh, he just passed away the last year or so. He, pa he I think he lived to be what ninety eight. He lived to be a, a very uh, he lived a, a very long and and, and very uh, productive life. Uh, so leave it to Beaver. Uh, oh yeah, number eight. I was going to say number eight is the Twilight Zone. That's another classic uh, that I enjoyed. And once again, for for the reasons that are not what you might think. Um, the thing is about Twilight Zone that uh, the, the reason why I liked it was not just because of the sci-fi uh, 
suspense aspect of it, but because the writing was so brilliant in terms of bringing various topics and various concepts to mind. And these were all based on human... The thing is about Twilight Zone, a lot of people think of Twilight Zone as it's very, you know, like Outer Limits and, and things like that. Another show that Ed mentioned, I think, early on, which is another show that I enjoyed. Um, the, the thing about Twilight Zone, it wasn't just an anthology series about weird stuff. It was really an anthology series about people and about about their mindsets and 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 human nature it was really more of a show about human nature than it was about anything really weird and way out there uh, things would go way out there because of the, the way the way human nature was the way, the way people thought and the way they'd react to some things and the type of people that they were because of their uh you know, because of human nature, because human nature can be way out there in the twilight zone sometimes. Um, and a lot of the things that people, that, that happen to people in those episodes of Twilight Zone, basically they brought on themselves by their own poor choices or their own good choices, depending on what it was, depending on, on the situation. So, um, I mean, there were shows about redemption, there were shows about... Uh, I, I can remember a, a number of, show, uh, of episodes about uh, getting their comeuppets, <laughs> getting their their uh, you know, paying their dues on, on certain things for for not being very good people, and being rewarded for being good people that they had been trodden on in, in society. And all, and in other words, it it was really a show about human nature. Um, it's really what the Twilight Zone was about. If you look down, and there are very many layers to that show, but that's essentially what it really it was about. Um, number seven. Number seven. I Love Lucy. I Love Lucy, of course. My wife mentioned that uh, I Love Lucy is a favorite of hers. I know it's a, f a favorite of hers. It was a favorite of my mom's, too. It's a favorite of mine. And, and you know what? Um, I Love Lucy is is I think one of the 10 greatest TV shows of all time for one reason. Well, for many different reasons, because they broke the mold on a lot of different things. They, they did a lot of innovative things there. They broke the mold in a lot of ways, and, and not just the, the inner, you know, you're talking about a, a Cuban guy marrying a, 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 you know, an American girl and all that kind of stuff. They broke the mold primarily with TV production because it was I Love Lucy that that really set the pace and, and really what set the bar for all TV shows that came after it, especially sitcoms. All C because TV shows had been filmed, they had been d done live, but this was one that they shot on 16mm with a three-camera setup on a stage live in front of a live audience. It, it, this was very innovative, and their system for shooting, the for prepping and shooting the show every week, that system is what's being used today. They, th that system for, for shooting uh, television uh, sitcoms is still being used today. That's, they set the bar for that. That was, Ilo, that was uh, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz that did that. Uh, so they, they broke a lot of... Uh, and by the way, I Love Lucy, uh, Desi Lu Productions, you know, of course, they, they, uh, they produced Star Trek, too. That was one of the last... Uh, last series that they actually produced as Desilu Studios. So you can thank I Love Lucy. You can thank I Love Lucy. If it wasn't for I Love Lucy, there would have been no Star Trek. Think about that for a minute. That'll put you in the Twilight Zone, right? Um, Ed says, Wally, the rules are harder on you when you were a little kid than when you were a grown-up. And he says, sure, B, that's because the grown-ups make the rules. <laughs> yeah, the classic line from Leave it to Beaver. And yes, Lucy approved Star Trek for Desi Lu. Absolutely, uh, Ed's right on both fronts. If it wasn't for Lucy, actually, that uh, Star Trek never would have been shot and made because uh, it was uh, it, it was not something you know a lot of, a lot of people were not sci-fi on TV was not a real big genre that people were looking at, and, and uh, Lucy uh, Lucille Ball uh, took that and said, "Hey, we're going to produce this," and, and and she backed that. She fully backed that. It's great, uh, 
Great stuff. So yes, if it wasn't for Lucy, there would have been no, no you know, Captain Kirk or Captain Picard. Uh, none of them. Here's another one that's on my list that's a favorite of mine, News Radio. News Radio, which was on cable initially, uh, is now in syndication. You can find it around. But uh, News Radio launched uh, a, a couple of careers there and actually helped a couple of careers. News Radio is a real classic. And uh, it, 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 one of the, th the thing I like most about News Radio, and yeah, I, I know that there, there are a couple of uh, people there uh, in News Radio that uh, I don't want to go too far down with that. But of course, yeah, Joe Rogan, uh, if you, you want to listen to Joe Rogan's podcast, he, he was in News Radio. He played a character in News Radio, and a very funny one, as a matter of fact. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yes, News Radio uh, was really off the wall. I mean, this was this was a show that just broke all of the barriers down and broke the fourth wall, uh, you know, in, in different ways, in, in, in different aspects. But they they uh, really did some bizarre things on news radio that just made it all the more funnier. And I thought that that they really they did some very very strange <laughs> and innovative things in that show. And it was so fast paced, and the dialogue was fast paced, and, and everybody just moved. Uh, yeah, it was it was just a, lo a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed that show, and uh, uh, if you ever get a chance to see news radio, uh, Ed says yeah, absolutely news radio. Yes, v just very much. It was just a great show, very very smartly written. I, one of the best written TV shows I'd seen in a long long time. Uh, next one on the list for me. Andy Griffith Show. The Andy Griffith Show. Classic. Of course, I'm living in North Carolina. Of course, everybody in North Carolina is anybody in North Carolina or who isn't anybody in North Carolina. Uh, you know, that's 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 the show you talk about, the Andy Griffith Show, because it was based in North Carolina, you know, pretty much. The whole premise of the show was based in, in the small town of Mayberry, the fictional town of Mayberry, which is actually based on a real town in North Carolina, which we've been to, as a matter of fact. Um, the real Mayberry, uh, and uh, the Andy Griffith Show, just a classic, very well written, and uh, a very wholesome show, a very wholesome family show, and let's face it, Don Knotts, the first five years, Don Knotts, who, he was like, what, a five-time, a four-time, five-time Emmy winner, and uh, most of his Emmys, I think, from came from this show, <laughs> it's just, just a phenomenal actor, Don Knotts. And not only that, but uh, it 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 produced a spin it produced the uh, spinoff show, uh, another long lived show, uh, a couple of spinoffs actually. Mayberry RFD went on with Ken Berry after that, after Andy Griffith left the show, and of course uh, Gomer Pyle, USMC Gomer Pyle. Surprise, surprise, surprise! Yeah, I know that Gomer Pyle. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, just just the fact that Andy Griffith, a very very long running series, as a matter of fact, and a couple of iterations, and the fact that it spawned the uh, the uh, you know Gomer Pyle and, and the the other series that uh, that that came after it, and it's just it, I think it it. I think it set the bar for a lot of other different series in different ways. Uh, I, I and and wholesome TV. I think that was one of the last uh, bastions of wholesome TV shows. I think I would say small town Mayberry. Uh, everybody who who didn't want to live in small town Mayberry at some point, you know, <clears throat> who doesn't want to live there now? I, I'm 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 starting to think I I want to move to small town Mayberry. <clears throat> So the next on the list here, next on the list, WKRP in Cincinnati. That's my number four pick, WKRP in Cincinnati. Another classic show. Yeah, I like these uh, these radio shows, don't I? But WKRP is just so off the wall funny, and it's, it's just some of the absurd. Who can forget the famous or the infamous um, turkey drop episode? <clears throat> Who, you know... I could, you know, he says, hey, I thought turkeys could fly, right? <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look it up. So very classic. It's probably one of the best episodes they ever did in that show. But that whole show was just awesome. The ensemble cast was great. 
And uh, I mean, just uh, perfectly cast, that show was. It really was. WKRP in Cincinnati uh, is one of my top, top favorites. Along the lines of, you know, same, along the same lines as Barney Miller and, and some of the other ones that came along around that era. Uh, just, just classic stuff. And uh, Lynn Marley says, oh, Lynn Marley says, good night, Rick. It's my bedtime. Uh, cheers. Oh, wow. Oh, here's to you, Lynn Marley. Please don't forget to, to leave me, uh, you know, your, your uh, you know, email me your info so I can get these, these, uh, prize, this prize out to you, okay? Here's to Lee, Lynn Marley. And thank you. Thank you very much for the raid. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Um, let's see. Oh, you know, I I, uh, I sat on this thing <laughs> for a long time. Sorry about that, folks. Sometimes I have a tendency to quit uh, to uh, forget to switch back and forth when I should be switching. Okay, so here's my next one. Here's number three. Number three is Faulty Towers. Faulty Towers, another classic that my whole family has seen. I watched it when it first came out. Uh, well, when it first came out here in the U.S., uh, it was a British show. If you've never seen Faulty Towers, we're talking about John Cleese. John Cleese and Monty Python. If you like Monty Python, you'll love Faulty Towers. Monty Python's not on this list because I couldn't fit it in. I just simply couldn't fit it in. There were just too many shows. But I, I am a, a Python fan. But Faulty Towers, uh, John Cleese, uh, of course, uh, continued his, his great career with that show. And uh, it's just, just a classic. You're falling down funny. Almost every line in that show is classically it's just it's just uh, unbelievably funny and um just it's just great writing great the premises are, are just great um and if you like seinfeld you like faulty towers in the same sort of general sense where things just kind of come together you know how in seinfeld you know how in the seinfeld show which is another great show by the way Seinfeld, they'd have all these ways to kind of, they'd have all these different threads going, and then they kind of, they'd all kind of sort of tie together at the end of the show into one one big mess. Faulty Towers did the same sort of thing, and they did that before Seinfeld did. But it, there was some of that that that, that really just, uh, I love that kind of writing. I really do. I, really, I love that kind of writing. Faulty Towers. And, uh, you know, I showed it to my family, uh, as Sam Sanders says. I remember laughing a lot when watching that. It's just a classic, classic show. There is another classic show that did not make the list, uh, only because I forgot about it when I was writing the list. But it was one I definitely want to have on the list, and that was Police Squad. Police Squad, which is another classic show. There were only six episodes of Police Squad. That's the one with, Henry, uh, with uh, uh, excuse me, with... Uh, with Nielsen in it, and and uh, he was uh, from his from his uh, uh, <laughs> it was the uh, Naked Gun series. Thank you, N Naked Gun series, and uh, Leslie Nielsen, and uh, he uh, Naked Gun series uh, came about because of Police Squad, because of the, uh, the original the Zucker Brothers, who of course produced Airplane. They uh, uh, produced Police Squad, and uh, it only lasted six episodes and was abruptly cut because the network said, network executives in their infinite foolishness said, oh, people aren't going to get the, any of this stuff. This is too, you know, it's going to go way over their head. They're not going to get any of this. They, they, and basically, they're, they're saying that their own audience was too stupid to understand uh, the humor basically is what what they were saying basically they're they're telling us and the network executives in that network are telling us that their own viewers are too stupid to get the jokes that's basically in a nutshell what it was but um so they they ended they did six episodes of the series which is just hilarious uh and then that's what they did they created the naked gun movies um to continue that on and so the naked gun movies were based on that series directly uh, Leslie Nielsen's character uh, uh, Drubbin uh, uh, was uh, what's his name is uh, Lieutenant Drubbin. Uh, classic, classic stuff. I did not include that on this list because I just simply forgot it. But but if you get a chance, you got to go find out, seek out the Police Squad series. Just uh, and a phenomenal. Highly recommend it. 
Okay, Faulty Towers, number three. Number two is the Beverly Hillbillies, one of my all-time favorite shows. Jed and the Clan, he strikes oil. And he got, I mean, we're talking about a a poor to rich, a rags to riches story in the truest sense of the word and a fish out of water story at the same time where you have the hillbillies going to Beverly Hills and trying to cope with all the nuttiness that goes on, uh, that, that goes on. And then even if that time was uh, normal for everybody else in, in, in the big, you know, glitzy town of Beverly Hills, um, uh, from the backwoods of, uh, I think they were in Tennessee, I think is where they came from. Anyway, uh, Beverly Hillbillies, classic, classic TV show and just incredibly funny, very well written. And the, the, the everybody there was perfectly cast, perfectly class, cast from, you know, Jed, Uncle Jed, and, and who was Buddy Epson, uh, who went on to, to, to do, uh, he did a number of things, but he uh, probably also best known as, as uh, um, uh, the, uh, what's his name? <laughs> I can't think of the show now. Um, anyway, he, he went on to do some, some other big shows. Um, uh, Barnaby Jones, Barnaby Jones. There you go. And, uh, Irene Ryan, who actually passed away, uh, I think a year or two after the show ended. And, um, uh, you know, and then of course you had, um, uh, uh, the, the folks who played, uh, Ellie Mae and, and, um, uh, and uh, Jethro, and it's Jane, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, 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 Mr. Drysdale. It's classic, classic stuff. So anyway, um, that that's number two. Can you guess what my number one show is? Uh, what's your number? I haven't seen, heard anybody else's number one show. Uh, have you guessed what my number one show is of all time? Let me get back to the chat here. Let's see if if, if Ed can guess. Ed says Davy Crockett earlier. Yes, now Fess Parker did Davy Crockett, and he did uh, Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett. And uh, he played both. Davy Crockett was the Disney series. Daniel Boone was uh, the show that he went on to, to, to do a long time. By the way, another piece of useless trivia for you. Uh, Jimmy Dean. You're not familiar with Jimmy Dean? Jimmy Dean sausages? Jimmy Dean meat sausages? You know, um, the person who played um, one of the sidekicks on uh, the Daniel Boone series, that Jimmy Dean, <clears throat> Jimmy Dean, it was the same Jimmy Dean. After the Daniel Boone series ended, he went on to to uh, found the Jimmy Dean Sausage Company and be, went on to have a great career doing that. That same Jimmy Dean. Not to be confused with James Dean, and I think that's why he had to use Jimmy Dean because James Dean was already taken. <laughs> But uh, not Jimmy Dean. Uh, sidekick George Russell, Buddy Epson. Uh, let's see. We're, we're, okay, now I'm getting a little confused which one we're, we're talking about. But, oh, Buddy Epson and David Crockett. Yes, George Russell and Buddy Epson. Yes, yes. So uh, the number one, my number one show. Can you guess what my number one favorite show of all time is? I mean, of all time, my number one favorite show. As you can guess, most of all of these are sitcoms. Uh, not all of them. But most of them are sitcoms, and we'll get to sci-fi and other genres another time. Police shows like Columbo and stuff. I, I love Columbo and some of those other shows. But can you guess what my favorite TV show of all time uh, in that genre, the top t 10 classic TV shows of all time is? That's an easy one for me. It's a no-brainer. Easy one. Can you guess? Anybody who can guess? Okay. I'm going to tell you. It's Green Acres. Yes, that Green Acres. Green Acres, my all-time favorite TV show, and I'll tell you why. For many, many reasons, aside from the ensemble cast, the perfectly, uh, perfectly uh, cast uh, actors, and that ensemble, uh, Green Acres. Uh, the the reason is, and, and you know, by the way, Green Acres and Beverly Hillbillies, they were part of a trio of shows in the same universe, you know, along with Petticoat Junction. They were all part of the same, the same universe there. And they'd go back and do crossovers back and forth. But Green Acres, uh, one of my all-time favorite shows, and a couple of reasons why. One was because Green Acres... The writing was just phenomenal, and it was very quick. A lot like news radio. News radio was very quirky, very off the wall. That's and I think that's one reason why I like news radio. 
because it's that same quirkiness and that same kind of off the wall thing that Green Acres had going. Uh, they they had the same thing going. As a matter of fact, I think one of the characters in News Radio that was his favorite show was Green Acres, and it makes sense because I think the writers of News Radio were probably it shows. I think they were very much inspired by Green Acres. Because, it, and as a matter of fact, it was. The, the, uh, the guy who played the, the news director on news radio, that was his favorite show, was Green Acres. And uh, you could see that the writers of news radio were definitely directly inspired by Green Acres. Because it was that same off-the-wall humor. Now, they, uh, they didn't take it to some degrees that Green Acres did. Green Acres was known for taking their opening credits and doing really, really off-the-wall things with them. And they would break constantly break the fourth wall. Green Acres did. Just constantly broke the fourth wall doing that kind of thing, which is just what made the show so so enjoyable to watch. It was just a lot of fun to watch. But uh, to my all-time favorite show, Green Acres. So here are my top ten last... Uh, one more time, here are my top 10 classic TV shows of all time. Star Trek, Leave it to Beaver, The Twilight Zone, I Love Lucy, News Radio, The Andy Griffith Show, WKRP in Cincinnati, Faulty Towers, Beverly Hillbillies, and Green Acres. How many, uh, anybody there had, uh, had a lot of those on the list? I'm, I'm pretty sure Ed had a couple on the list, right? You had a few of them on the list, didn't you? Uh, Says I like your opinion of Sports Night. I don't know. I haven't really. I didn't really watch that uh, too much. Ed says Green Acres. Yes, absolutely, Green Acres. <laughs> Green Acres. It was so cleverly written. It's just so off the wall and cleverly written. And the editing was just so. The editing was just, just, just so great. I love the editing. And, and having been a film editor, I really, really appreciate the quick editing that they did. That was just that just made the film that much better. It really did. And uh, my favorite character on Green Acres, oh, well, it wasn't Arnold the Pig. It it was uh, it was Hank Kimball. <laughs> Hank Kimball, the guy who's just such a scatterbrain. Because sometimes I feel like that too. But anyway, here's uh, top ten Green Acres. Here's Green Acres. Top ten classic TV shows of all time. Well, I went long on this. And I did because I really got, I tell you, I can talk for hours about TV. I can talk for hours about TV shows. But I know it's time to close this up. So, uh, and, and I'm way over time tonight. So let's wrap this up real quick. Once again, tonight we were drinking the Camina. Is it Camina? I don't think it's Camina. I think it's Camina. Tempranillo. This is a 2019 Tempranillo. Uh, Tempranillo. Wow. I've had too much. This is a 2019 Tempranillo, this Camina. It's from Spain. It's a Spanish wine. I'll tell you what, I love this wine. I'm really impressed with it. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know what to expect from it. Uh, because I purchased it, it, it goes for $10. And I, I can tell you that it has a lot of fruit in this thing, a lot of berries. Very, very berry. It has, uh, this is a bold wine, first of all, but it has a lot of berries, a lot of cherry Blackberry uh, mix in it, some strawberry, uh, some little bit of chocolate I tasted. Very rich uh, berry mix, uh, which I really enjoyed. It's somewhat tannic, not too much, somewhat tannic. Very dry, but, excuse me, but uh, it is a very good, I was really impressed with it. It goes for about $10 online, but I bought it for $2.25 in the bargain bin at my local supermarket. I don't know if I'm going to find a deal like that again anytime soon. But I tell you what, this was quite a deal tonight. And it went well with all the foods I tried. And you know what? I said I was going to try it with this. I said I was going to try it with this wonderful, this wonderful, uh, I think it's a strawberry cupcake my wife made with her own homemade icing. Oh, wow. That's a good cupcake. I'm going to try it with this wine. Cupcakes and wine. Hmm. Let's try it. Really sweet. I don't think I'm going to try that again. It's good. It's good, but it's really, really sweet. I don't know if I can do that too much. Anyway, so that's my final review of, um, of this wine. And I'm glad I purchased it. I would recommend this. I would highly recommend this. Even $10, $15. I think this is actually worth $15, to be honest. But I'm glad I only paid what I paid for it. 
And 10, that's fair for me. That's fair. Anyway, I'm glad everybody joined me tonight. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. I had a great time. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you had as much fun as I did. I want to thank everyone for joining me here tonight. I want to thank, wow, uh, a moldy lunchbox for being here. Cole, uh, see Cole 86, Lynn Marley. Thank you for the, for the raid, by the way. I really do appreciate that. It means a lot. That square guy, thank you for being here tonight. CM Cinder. Uh, let's see, who else was here in the chat? Van Kesh, uh, you, you also want something, so send me, send me your, uh, shipping address to rick at and I'll get, uh, get that uh, prize out to you as well. Also, Lynn Marley, please don't forget to do that. Um, let's see, who else was here that joined me tonight? Uh, a lot of folks, uh, here. I, I did mention, uh, SQL 86. And uh, who else? Uh, long, long, uh, a lot of. T I'm scrolling through the chat. A lot of people in chat. And also, I want to thank uh, nobody, uh, nobody on YouTube. But thanks for watching. If you're watching later, also I want to thank uh, my good friend Ed for joining the chat. Tim, Tim, thanks for being there. And once again, to uh, Melanie, happy birthday. And also, and I just saw him pop in. I just saw him pop in in the last moments. Ed Panis. There are two Eds in the chat now, so I have to distinct. distinctly. There's Ed Anthony and Ed Panis. Ed, we got you. Got to have you two have to meet. Ed, 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 Ed. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, Ed says hi, Rick, and and right back at you, Ed. I'm glad you're here. Better late than never. And uh, once again, if you missed it, you can always kind of roll back and catch some of the fun we had. We had a lot of fun here tonight. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you, as I always do. And I can't stress enough how, um, how much I do. This is a lot of fun for me. Once again, I, I'm not really doing this for me. I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm having a good time. As long as I continue to do it and can afford to continue to do it, I'll, I'll, I'll keep doing it as long as we can do it. But I enjoy being here with you every week and, and, and in the chats and talking to everybody. It's, it's just a lot of fun. I have a great time. So, uh, you know, I, like I said, this has been a great experience for me. Uh, hopefully it can continue. But I want to thank you for being here. And I do appreciate the fact that you are, that you've been able to stick here with me and, and uh, just hang out for tonight on a Saturday night. So many other things that you could be doing, but you're here with me. That means... And that means a lot. It really does. So, thank you for being here. Please, next week, I don't know. I think next week we're going to open up this thing. This should be an interesting wine. The one in the back that we're going to open up. In the meantime, I want to uh, I want to ha ask everyone to have a safe week. Please stay safe. That square guy, you, you, stay, uh, you be safe, you and your family. Uh, especially during this pandemic and these trying times. Please stay safe. Have a great week. Have a safe week. Please do not drink and drive. Remember, drink in the comfort of your own home, your apartment, your dwelling, wherever it is, hotel room, whatever. Uh, call an Uber, call a Lyft if you need to. I'm not pitching for them. I'm just saying, you know, find a designated driver of some sort where you can get home safely if you have to. Otherwise, drink in the comfort of where you are and stay there, please. Because I want you to have a great week. I don't want you to have a safe week. Do not drink and drive. Do not text and drive. Remember that. Have a safe week. So you can all join me again next week. So we can all get together next week right here on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. We can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.